Siam, the Stella Chisiam, Haishka on Quian, Equalang, it's a chait, a tea kais, it's a slack to Mish Estalnoch, it's a slack to Mish Estalnoch, a chachit, it's a quokwal, it's a chilangeth, it's a chilangan, it's a chapait talks. Eat quen a quens and a salaluch la quens, it's a tzitziam, eat a a pachubs or a quachpish. So I'm just welcoming you in the language and we're going to talk a little bit about the Slaktamish people in our oral history about the uh, cedar plank houses and some of the origin of the plank house that came from Quechpish or Pachubs. And uh, Quechpish is the uh, traditional name for the bobcat. And that uh, Pachubs is the character's name of the bobcat and the story about how our longhouse structure came about. And the Plank House grant was funded to the First Nation Development Institute. And the nice thing about this grant is that we've had the opportunity to build upon a dream that our late skipper, Justin Finkbrenner, had. And that was to bring a longhouse back out to our ancestral territory of the San Juan Islands. So back in 2015, we had the opportunity to experience English camp. And we had a whole bunch of people there learning about how our ancestors once lived and about the land. And we got to gather and learn about the traditional plants and foods. And we heard that there used to be over a 600-foot longhouse. Um, so the late Justin Finkbonner was like, it's my dream to bring back the longhouses to this land. So he ended up writing this grant through the First Nation Development Institute, and he received it. It wasn't too long after he received those funds that he passed, unfortunately. Um, so, But the Lummi Nation decided it was still something really important that our kids learned. So working alongside Al and Uncle Smitty in the culture department, we started learning that we could continue to build upon these, this little model and build a small real-life model, and that was the 8x8 eight eight structure. But instead of building a full 8x8x8x8 eight by eight by eight by eight structure, and have it closed in, we were gonna cut it in half so people can also see the design of the inside and understand what the four poles meant. So then we learned and like, they took us around the reservation understanding how the administration building was built, how the Wecklium was built. They talked a little bit about how our longhouses were the same way and our smokehouses and how that really just defined us as who we are as Lummi. We're working with the youth, and we've been working with them out at English camp, and our ancestral home was 600 foot long. And when we go to that place, we can't even imagine how big 600 feet is there. But it was obviously a place that had everything that we needed. It had water, it had trees, it had salmon, it had... And obviously there was potlatches that brought us together where we sang and we danced. And um, that way of life was there for thousands of years. And we're only 160 years into the treaty. And yet the Coast Salish people are erased from their homeland. And so I think it's how I, I try to think how important it is for us and our children and our grandparents to be present in our homeland in modern times. Everyone in the community had a duty and a, a, a skill that they had that contributed to the, the good of the community. Like we, everyone, had, like there was a group that was good at fishing, so they became the fishermen for the, for the tribe. And then there were people who knew where and where to look for the berries and just when to look for them and just when they were the best. And there and there were people who knew how to build these great longhouses that could withstand through winters and anything that they needed to. And then there were people who knew how to carve a canoe just right so it could traverse the ocean waves and not tip over and keep you afloat. We heard the elders talk about when our longhouses were made they would use 
uh, part of the uh, the one side of the uh, house post when they're lined up is going to be male and one side will be female and the male when they're on one side <coughs> they'll always have a twist in them that's how you tell whether they're male or female then if you have the other sides going to be lined up those how those posts are going to be female and uh, and that will be straight, so the brain will be straight. they will be more pliable and more strong for canoes and planks and so forth. You can use both, but the ones that will have the strength is, is going to be the female. So when you look at the uh, structure of our community building, you will see one side has a male figure and one side has the female figure. So that's uh, one of the other teachings that we have in our in our uh, balance system and understanding of uh, balance is female and male are balanced and, and that uh, you need both in order to exist uh, and in, but it also provides balance there's male trees female trees there's male plants uh, male animals female animals so you always see that but it also becomes the the uh, uh, construct of what we call our chilangath, which is our inherent rights, the things that we inherited from our our creator, like the longhouses and our shwaktan, our things that, uh, like the shwalat, or the reef net sites and the shwala. Uh, uh, <coughs> historically, uh, these shwalat, shwalat uh, are handed down from male to male to male. And, uh, but the construct of the reef net itself is in the image of a female. So everything we see in our culture will always have that balance between the male and the female, that representation there. So that's, the, that's the, one of the other values and teachings of our, of our people about the longhouse. I think the one thing I really appreciate about the longhouse is that you know, it's really just about carrying the work forward, um, bringing it forward for children and their grandchildren. And it must have been pretty great to see them pulling all these, pulling all the cedar and all the wood that they needed together for these long houses and these plank houses to cut off out of the trees and just, and seeing how amazingly like they could craft everything just the way, the right way they needed to, and get everything they need without gathering too much and not wasting any of it, and using everything at their disposal, and putting these great houses together that last for so long, and they could support so many different people, and last through the harshest winters, and support so many different people and so many families. I do wish I could see that today. But I'm just really grateful and thankful, you know, that um, we were guided in a good way and that we're, that we're honoring that work from the ancestors. And I think we'll continue to do that type of work, whether it's rope making or bent wood boxes or tooling mats or drying, swam, coarse clams. There's a an entire curriculum, lifetime of learning the old ways. And we're gonna have to learn them slowly, one step at a time, but um, having the kids put, put in the long, little longhouse replica in the hands of the kids and then having them carry it forward too through their DNA memory and I think we're doing something right just my opinion as far as the little longhouse and what it means to us it, re it just means we are honoring our ancestors those, those world views live in us still today and we have to carry it forward Asiam Haishka Anga Satsayat on Kuyan, Equalangus, the Chait, Atiyakayas. So, uh, uh, OCM is just between you and I, is how we would say that, but OCM would be plural for uh, not only the individual, but many uh, individuals that could see this. That way, that's how we use the language. 
uh, and then we would say Nukchis in Nikwalia, uh, which is uh, uh, thanking the ancestors that are here with us. Uh, and that was our, our, our acknowledgement to them. Uh, and then uh, Tsayat is the gesture that we use, is the thanking the people with the hands. And it was always a, a gesture that we used all among the Slaktimish or the Kosalish people. And so this gesture of uh, uh, raised hands like this is what we call Tsayat, and that's what we're saying is we raise our hands and thank you for listening to our words and watching the work that we have today about our, our Kwokwo, our origin and our uh, history. This actually just happened yesterday, they said. We would like to thank our elders for showing us what to do. We're still alive. We would like to thank our elders that moves down the line. Thank our elders for helping us and sharing the teachings and the kids that are watching and learning because we can't do that without them and as we're learning ourselves. Thank you for all your work.